My name is Sue Hagen. I'm a student in the archaeology program at Palomar College and have prepared this presentation for the San Diego Archaeological Center. Today I will be talking about ink bottles. What comes to mind when we think of ink bottles? Small glass bottles maybe? Possibly ceramic bottles? Others might envision ornate ink wells. Ink bottles are classified as utilitarian and would have been used by people from all walks of life and socioeconomic backgrounds. This presentation will focus on the small glass ink bottles that would have been intended for personal use in the home or for use by an individual in an office setting. Humans have used pigments for painting for over 40,000 years. As far back as the 23rd century before Common Era, the Chinese were using various inks for painting and writing. What we know as India ink was actually made in China from ingredients sourced from India. It was favored by artists for being waterproof. In Europe, parts of Asia, and eventually in the United States, Iron gall ink made from tannin was used for over 1400 years until the 19th century. In the United States, the ink industry comprised over 300 ink makers by the late 19th century, selling a wide variety of inks, packaged in a variety of bottles, in colors all across the spectrum. Most companies had gone out of business by the 1960s or 70s following the invention and widespread use of the ballpoint pen. Just a few have survived to the present day. The large number of ink producers meant that ink was an important industry in the whole of the United States, but the industry was also important to the cities and towns where factories and shops were established. One company in particular, the L.H. Thomas Company, established their factory in a small town, employing many of the citizens of the town and in fact attracting more people to work and live there. Thomas envisioned a community both within the factory and outside of it. As the industry and individual companies grew, ink manufacturers were attracted to the larger industrial centers like Chicago and New York. However, many stayed where they began, moving only to larger facilities in the same city. The next two slides show an abbreviated timeline of some of the major ink producers in the United States, including those manufacturers whose bottles have been found in the San Diego area and are now in the collections at the San Diego Archaeological Center. In the 19th century, Printers, stationers, and others who were already using ink for their businesses prepared, bottled, and sold ink, sometimes of their own invention. The earliest commercial ink came on the market in 1816, and the industry expanded over the course of the century. Thaddeus Davids, Apollos W. Harrison, and Sanford's were a few of the earliest. These were followed closely by Carter's, Stafford's, and J. and I. E. Moore. The beginning of the Civil War could have signaled trouble for the newly started ink companies, but they thrived, and new companies like L. H. Thomas were started during the war. Following the war and into the 20th century, Diamond Ink Company, Charles M. Higgins, and Schaefer's Ink were founded. After the Civil War and into the 1880s, American expansion west meant that people were moving further apart from each other. Telephones were just coming into use, so handwritten letters were key to keeping in touch with faraway family and friends. Ink was a needed commodity. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were also a time of industrial development in general, 
and the ink makers took advantage of the greater demand for their products across many industries, even getting in on the revolution themselves by patenting new and improved designs for ink bottles. Ink bottles were manufactured using the same processes and techniques of the time for other types of bottles. This section will provide a brief overview of those methods with examples of ink bottles. But for those interested in learning more, detailed explanations can be found on the bottle website of the Society for Historical Archaeology, which will be linked in the references at the end of this presentation. The earliest examples of glass ink bottles were free blown. The bottles here show a pontal scar on the base and the unevenness of the glass, which are features of this method of bottle manufacturing. Mold blown bottles came next, which eliminated the pontal scar and bottles manufactured using these two early methods had various finishes on the tops of the bottles. Cracked off finishes are basically an unfinished finish. Rolled or folded finishes gave bottles a smoother look. Applied finishes were created with additional glass to form flares or rings. And tooled finishes were created with a special tool giving bottles a cleaner look. Finally, bottles made with the automatic bottle machine of the early 20th century were more consistent in appearance and able to be produced more rapidly. The suction scar on the round bottle can be seen just above the name, and the group of bottles are additional examples of machine-made ink bottles. Ink makers were flourishing, but who was actually making the bottles? The history of the L.H. Thomas Company mentions that glass bottles were shipped in from outside manufacturers, but according to William Coville in his book, Ink Bottles and Ink Wells, determining which glass maker produced which ink bottle is difficult because many ink bottles do not include maker's marks. We can see from these pages from the 1906 and 1920 Illinois Glass Company catalogs that the company made several shapes of ink bottles. This likely would have been true of many glass makers. Prior to the 1950s, ink bottles came in a wide variety of colors, as shown in this collection of umbrella ink bottles from the mid 19th century. Some of these colors can be used to help narrow down a date range for bottles especially when used with other diagnostic features. Colorless bottles were at first difficult to achieve because they required the purest of ingredients, so they were uncommon prior to the 1870s. But after 1910 and the invention of the automatic bottle machine, colorless glass became the most common. Aqua, though quite common in the late 19th century, was uncommon after 1920. Cobalt was a common color for medicines and was also used for ink bottles. This color was uncommon after the 1930s. The variety of colors of ink bottles are on par with the variety of shapes. Ink bottles can be square, conical, rectangular, octagonal, and more. Shapes such as cottages, barrels, domes, and igloos were also popular. Some shapes can be attributed to a specific date range. According to Coville, thousands of patents for ink bottles were issued. As we can see from the small sample here, one would be able to find nearly any shape to their liking. For this project, I was provided a list of bottles from the collections housed at the San Diego Archaeological Center. Of these, 46 were identified as ink. Upon review of the information provided, five were removed from consideration because they could not be verified as ink bottles. 20 of the bottles had no identifying information included in the catalog. These pieces from the collection at the San Diego Archaeological Center 
include the Higgins ink bottle on the left, which features an embossed base. The second bottle from the left has Bixby embossed on the base. This is one of the bottles that could not be verified as ink because the Bixby company was mainly known for blacking or shoe polish and the bottles were possibly the same as those used for ink. The group of four bottles on the right are additional bottles from the San Diego Archaeological Center's collection. As you can see, even in a small sample, there is quite a variety. In the pieces shown here, we see ink bottles similar to those found in California and San Diego, from Pennsylvania and Michigan to New York and even further to New Zealand. This is quite a collection and highlights the diversity of ink bottles found throughout the country and the world. A good portion of the New Zealand bottles originated outside of New Zealand, including from England and Japan. Ink was a worldwide business and the ink makers in the US were also selling their products overseas. Ink advertisements are numerous, most likely because of the large number of ink makers competing in the market. With all the competition, ink makers had to determine how to draw in more customers with their products, like Stafford's perfumed violet ink for ladies. The L.H. Thomas Company used the Black Cat in their advertising for many years. And Carter's Inc. had multiple styles of ads, including this one on the bottom left, touting their sales figures. Many ads feature pictures of the products themselves. Occasionally, ink makers would write articles in a newspaper or magazine purportedly to tell a story that might be of interest, but really was just propaganda to sell products. One such story from the Sanford Company conveys the story of a chemist who fell into a vat of ink and was magically saved by Sanford's ink eraser. The black and white figures shown here are actual drawings made to accompany the story in a magazine. Various sources were consulted for this presentation and are listed here. The information provided by the Bureau of Land Management and Society for Historical Archaeology on their bottle website was invaluable for this project. Bottle collectors also have a wealth of knowledge and ex expertise in this area. There are many available avenues for additional research into ink bottles, from learning about the people who created their own inks or the buildings that house the growing factories, to tracking down the bottle manufacturers or identifying unknown bottles. There is a topic of research for almost any interest. I would also like to extend special thanks to Jessica McFeeters for providing photographs of ink bottles from the San Diego Archaeological Center's collections. Seeing ink bottles that were used by San Diegans makes this topic much more meaningful. Thank you.